Hello, my name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode in the series Mastering the Basics of MySonet Embroidery Software. If you're interested in learning more about embroidery software, are a subscriber or own a copy of MySonet, why not subscribe to our free YouTube channel? And that way you won't miss out on any of our episodes. In this film, I'm going to be explaining the differences between saving and exporting files, as well as talking about the many different file formats that MySonet Embroidery is compatible with. I'm on a PC with the platinum level of software, but everything I show you is compatible across all levels of the paid for software. And the concept is the same with a Mac computer. In this episode, when I'm saving and exporting, I'm saving and exporting directly onto this computer rather than saving either onto the MySonet cloud account or direct onto a USB stick. To start off with, I want to show you the difference between a VP3 and a VP4 file format. Now, these are the preferred file formats within MySonet software. Although you can open, edit and export any embroidery file in the main embroidery file formats that are compatible with all the main embroidery machine brands. So please don't think that you have to have either a Husqvarna, Faf or Singer embroidery machine to use MySonet embroidery software. So as I've mentioned, the preferred file format within MySonet is a VP3 or a VP4. So let me just begin by starting off. I want to show you the difference between those. So I've got an embroidery that I've created um, and this is a VP3. So I know that this is a VP3 file format because over here on the film strip, basically the design is only a single stage. Now what I have got here is a VP4 file version of this embroidery design and straight away over here on the uh, film strip, can you see we've actually got two stages. So the advantage of having a VP4 file is that it is more editable. So let me show you. So for example, if I make layer two, which is the lettering, because we've got the uh, uh, A here, um, uh, the active layer, so I've clicked on that. If I then do a left click, I can go edit lettering. And for instance, what I could do is I could type in Camper van company. So you could change the lettering, and in this case, I'm going to change the wording. Uh, uh, sorry, the font. And if I click OK on that, straight away. So the advantage of having a VP4 is it's much easier to make those changes. I could have made that change with the VP3. It's just a little bit trickier to do that. And you can see how adaptable that might be that if you've got a logo and you want to uh, personalize it uh, with uh, uh, names, how easy and quick it is to do that. And it might be that you say, well, Karina, why are you bothering with a VP3 file format at all? And the answer to that is many machines, particularly older machines, will only read a VP3 file format. Let's talk about how you might want to um, uh, actually preserve this. So the, que the first question is, is it that you might be coming back to work on uh, this design? Is it that maybe it might be that you have a very complicated design with lots and lots of different things going on that you're tweaking and that you maybe want to go away and think about it, that you're not sure that you're finishing, uh, finished for certain and it's almost like an ongoing project or is it that you're saying, yep, that's good. So how do you go about actually preserving this? So of course you, you could come up here and do uh, a send to MySonet and actually send it up to your cloud account. 
not a problem to do that although I would actually suggest if you have a design that is um, uh, uh, quite complicated that maybe you've got lots of layers lots of different stages on your film strip here in this case we've only got two but for instance I've regularly have designs where maybe I might have 20 30 stages or even more within the film strip what I would suggest you do in that case is that you do a save as let me show you how you do that so I would go file and here is save as now just so that you know save will basically if you just click save it will save it with the name of the existing file so in this case up here on the title bar up here it says camper van so if I was to click save that would automatically just save those okay but in most cases it might be that you're starting from new it would be untitled or it might be that you actually want to say oh this is the camper van one where it's the company one not the um, I love my camper van so it might be you want to title it slightly different and in those cases I would strongly recommend you use save as so let me click on that the dialog box will open so I just want to draw your attention down here that there is only one option a VP4 and in this case I am going to just change that title and I'm going to call that camper van company and then I'm going to click save and up here you can see that it has been retitled okay so that has preserved that original um, uh, uh, embroidery the one that uh, the VP4 that says I love my camper van but I have also now saved this now it might be you say well that's great Karina but I'm one of those people that need to either use the VP3 file format or maybe my embroidery machine takes another file format how do I actually get this design that I've worked on onto perhaps my USB stick so let me show you I'm going to use um, another embroidery design as my example you can see um, I've got a design here if I'm looking at the film strip we've got um, a, a group design I've got an orange box around there that's uh, 12 components uh, uh, 12 of these little violets and then I've got this iris in the center now if I do a select all up here you can actually see over here and I just want to draw your attention to this that we have uh, basically um, 13,000 nearly 250 stitches and we have a great big stonking 76 uh, color changes now there is a film in the series where I do explain about combining and color sorting okay but what I want to do is I also want to show you a shortcut way of doing that because when we export as a vp3 or another file format basically the software will do some of those stages for us so I've got this design I want to stitch it out on my machine but my machine only takes a vp3 not a problem so I'm going to go to file and I am going to come down to export now this dialog box opens now let's talk about what's going on here now there is a pull down button on here and these are all the file formats that you can choose so if you want to you can actually do an export as a VP4 it does flatten down some of those layers it's it, an exported VP4 is is not quite as adaptable as um, uh, when you do a save as but I don't want to get too sort of geeky and technical on that but for instance you can see that I can choose the VP3 here but there are also all these many other different file formats basically these are all the main embroidery file formats that basically any current and many 
uh, older embroidery machines will stitch out. So for instance, if you need to uh, um, export your embroidery designs as a DST file or a GEF or a PEC or a PES, this is how you do it. But in this case, I'm going to show you on a VP3. So I'm going to click on that. Now let's actually talk about what's going on here. Now can you see the next dialog box down here is talking about optimising for sewing. So this is going to do an automatic combine. It's going to remove any overlap. So for instance, let's say you have placed an embroidery on top of another one. The software will actually look at that and it should remove any of those underlying stitches. It's going to do a colour sort for me and then the optimised stitch length. Now what that means is the software will look at any stitches that are under a certain size and it will basically take out, in this case, if I click on the options over here, it will take out any stitches that are less than 0.8 mil because that will also help reduce uh, the density uh, of um, the embroidery. It will give you a better stitch quality. I haven't got any decoration stitches in there, but just here, if, if necessary, you can change your rotation. Um, and for instance, if you needed to reverse your embroidery design, let's say you're doing a felting design or for some reason you need to reverse it, you can do that. There is a splitting option here, but I would always say use the splitting wizard that actually is in the uh, uh, software itself. So in this case, I'm happy with this. On one cautionary note, just be careful about doing a combine and colour sort if you have appliques in your, um, uh, uh, in your design, particularly some older applique design. When you do the colour sort, it can wipe out the colour stops. So just be careful about doing that. If you want to, all that you can do is you can uncheck it. But in this case, I'm going to uh, check it for reasons that I'll show you. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to say, where would you like to put it? Now, um, the default is often in the, um, uh, basically, you can see up here, it's um, offering me in, on my documents in the my sonet folder there is a tab that is called my designs and at the moment it's untitled because up here on the title it says it's untitled so what I am going to do is I am going to call this violets and iris so that I know you can see it saying a vp3 and then I'm going to click export OK, now at this stage, this has not changed this at all. You can see that we've still got this stitch count. We've still got those numbers. But what I'm actually going to do um, is I'm, I'm going to go and um, open that up. Uh, I'm, I'm going to insert that. Uh, you might find it useful to watch uh, another episode in this series about opening and inserting embroidery designs so that you understand the difference. But I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to click on the insert button up here and I just need to find that. And here it is, violets and irises. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click open. And straight away, look what's happened over here on the design panel. Um, Previously, my uh, stitch count was 13248, and you can see that I've lost nearly 150 stitches, but most importantly, it's colour sorted. And I've gone from uh, that great big stonking uh, um, uh, 76, I think, uh, colour changes down to 10. So that's going to be much, much quicker to stitch out. So again, that's an advantage that, that when you export, there is that choice there for you to um, do a colour sort to combine that aspect. There's one more thing that I would like to talk about, and that is, for instance, if I go to um, export this design in here, I'm going to go export. Now, straight away, I've got a different icon up here. I've got a different file format. 
And when I click on that, it's only offering me this as an EVP3. You can see the icons different. You can see the file format. When I'm saying file format, that's basically the little bit of text that happens right at the end of the file name. And that is telling me that this is containing either part of or all of a design that has come from the MySoNet library. And that means this is an encrypted file and that you would only be able to open it and stitch it out if you have an active subscription to the MySoNet library. If your subscription lapses, let's say for whatever reason you decide to take a break from your subscription, the files will not disappear. They will stay happily wherever you've stored them but you won't be able to uh, uh, stitch them out. You won't be able to do anything with them. So I'm just going to cancel that. So for instance, I know that this heart in here has come from the MySonet library. So what are my golden rules about saving and exporting files? The first thing is I would always say do a save as even if your machine can't stitch out a VP4, save them in that format because it's much easier to edit and change them. It might be that you just have a folder somewhere on your computer where you just pop any VP4 files just so that if you needed to at some point in the future, you could go back and edit them much more easily. Uh, and my second golden rule is if you need to use a USB stick, then you are exporting. I hope you found this a useful film. If you have, please like us and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can help you master the basics of MySonet embroidery software. Happy sewing!